All right, for section 7.1 Pythagorean Theorem, I'm going to look at two examples. The first one I'm going to have a picture drawn, and the second one is going to be a word problem. So the first one here, what I want to do is I want to look at, the first of all, the formula for Pythagorean Theorem. If you don't remember it from grade 8 and 9, here it is uh, here. So we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. What it's saying is that if I built a square off of each side of a triangle, then the two shorter legs, so if I built a square off of this side and the bottom side, the two shorter legs, those areas of those squares are equal to the square, the area of the square built off the what's called the hypotenuse. Now, that comes to another thing, is that the last letter here denotes the hypotenuse. So you have to know that the hypotenuse is the longest side and is right across from the right angle. Okay, so in here I have two triangles. Let's look at the bottom triangle first. So the x that I'm trying to solve for is the hypotenuse. Okay, in terms of the smaller triangle. So if it's the hypotenuse, that means a and b are the other two sides. You can label them a, b, or you can just note that it's just the addition of the two sides is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So first thing I want to do is I want to square each side. So I have 4.2 squared plus, because that's what the formula says, plus b squared, which is 6.8 squared, is equal to my hypotenuse, which I don't know, so I'm going to have to call that x squared. So I'm looking for x. So what do I have to do first? Well, I have to square both these values. So I have 4.2 squared is 17.64 plus, then I have 6.8 squared, which is 46.24, and that's equal to x squared. My second step is I add these both together, so I have my 46.24 plus my 17.64, which is equal to 63.88, and that's equal to my x squared. Now I need to solve for just x on its own. If you're unsure of how to do that, the way to solve for algebra is always opposite operations. Opposite operations. So right now my x is being squared. So in order to solve for x, the opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. And that looks like this symbol on your calculator. Okay, so I have to square root both sides. The right side, the square root is going to cancel with the square, and I'll be left with just x. On the left side, I have 63.88. Find this button on your calculator somewhere, press it, and you should get the square root, which is 7.99 is equal to x. So I use Pythagorean theorem based on my first formula, which I add the two sides together, the two shorter sides, and is equal to my hypotenuse, which is always the longest side, and is always right across from the right angle. Right across from the right angle. So, I've solved for x. Now, I want to solve for y. So because I've solved for x, now I'm looking at this top, top triangle here. I have x. Let's get rid of x now, and let's call it 7.99. Now notice in the top triangle, if you kind of get rid of the bottom triangle, you can see that here's my right angle. Right across from that right angle is the hypotenuse. I'll call it HYP for short. And this time the other two sides I have are my Y and my 7.99. So how is this going to change my formula? Well, What's going to happen is I'm going to have to do a little bit, a bit of algebra or plug these into the formula and do the algebra afterwards. But what happens is that you end up having a squared is equal to, I take my c squared, leave it on that side, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my b squared and move it over or subtract it from c squared. Because c is always my hypotenuse, always my longest side, I have to subtract the other side from my hypotenuse. So I subtract the other side, which is 7.99 squared, 
from my hypotenuse, which is 10.4 squared. Sort of. Yes. So I always start off with my hypotenuse, subtract the other side from it. So it's going to be 10.4 squared minus 7.99 squared. Always start off with your biggest side. And that's going to be equal to y or whatever my other side is squared. So let's start this out. That means I have y squared is going to be equal to 10.4 squared minus 7.99 squared. So now I've filled in my values. Next thing I want to do is I want to square these. So I have 10.4 squared, which is 108.16. And then I have 7.99 squared, which is 63.84. That's equal to my y squared. And then I subtract them. So I have 108.16 minus 63.84. I'm left with 44.32, so y squared is equal to 44.32. And what's the last thing? Remember, I want to solve for y. I need to solve for y on its own. You remember the opposite operation of squaring something? To get rid of that little 2, I have to square root. Okay, so I square root both sides. So I have my 44.32, I take the square root, I'm left with 6.66. So that means y is equal to 6.66. So remember that when you're square rooting something, it cancels out a square. Square rooting cancels out a square. Square, when you're squaring something, you're getting bigger. When you're square rooting something, you're getting smaller. So that's the first example running through an actual picture. Now the last example I want to work through doesn't have a picture but it's got a bunch of words and this is exactly how most of your assignment questions will be. So let's read through this. A 40 foot ladder reaches 38 feet up the side of a house. So 40 foot ladder. When you're climbing a ladder you have it leaning against the house. So here in red I will have my house. And then the 40 foot ladder is leaning up against the house. And it says, how far from the base of the house is the foot of the ladder? So if this is my ladder, here's the foot of my ladder. Now I'm trying to figure out this distance right here. This is how far. So let's draw a straight line. We're going to make a right angle triangle again. Now, the information that it gives us tells us a lot of information about the picture. It's a 40-foot ladder. So I know that this is a 40-foot ladder. The next thing it says is that it reaches 38 feet up the side of the house. So that means this side here whoops, is going to be 38 feet. So I have two sides of my right triangle. I'm trying to find this side down here. We'll call that x. Just like the uh, example above, always find out where your hypotenuse is. So in this case, it's over here because there's my right angle. That means that this is one of my other two sides. How do I find x? Remember that x squared is just going to be equal to, if I'm given my hypotenuse, I just take my hypotenuse, which is 40 squared, and subtract off the other side, 38 squared. But always start with your hypotenuse. Always. So I have my hypotenuse if you're given it. Hypotenuse squared minus 38 squared. So 40 squared is 1600. So x squared is equal to 1600 minus 38 squared is equal to 1444. I subtract the two, so I have 1600 minus 1444 is 156. And then how do I solve? I want to solve for, again, just x on its own. Just x on its own. And remember, I have to take the square root of both sides because the square root cancels with the square. Good. Square rooting gets it smaller. So I have 156. I take the square root. I'm left with 12.49. So x is equal to 12. Point, oh, I forgot. 49. And don't forget your units. Whenever you're dealing with questions like this, always, always write your units. You're finding an answer to a real-world question. So it should have a real-world answer. 12.49 feet. 
So the ladder is 12.49 feet from the base of the house. So there are two good examples. You can watch through them again if you get stuck. Um, one involving an already drawn picture and the next one involving a word problem where you have to draw the picture first, label your sides, and then solve. Remember the two formulas there. We have one where you're adding two sides to find the hypotenuse, and the other one if you're given the hypotenuse, then you have to subtract from the hypotenuse to solve for one of the other sides. So just be aware of that, and let me know if you have any questions.